Hello and welcome to the next episode of At Home With. Now this month we're at home with Richard Nicholson and his dad Roger. The Nicholson family run Cannon Hall Farm in Yorkshire, which is now one of the most well-known and popular farms in the UK. Uh, They saw even more success after appearing on Channel 5's On The Farm series. Um, But at the heart of everything they do uh, is family. So come with me, Emily Ashworth, The Farmer's Guardian's Features Editor, as we talk all things food, all things family, all things farming, and of course, all things Christmas. So let's start with, you know, for anyone listening who doesn't know anything about you or the farm, can you, you know, give a little overview of the farm and the family behind it? Why is that now to me? <laughs> you go for right, it, Roger. Well, okay. <laughs> um, in, uh, in, 1950, in 1958, we, we actually bought the farm because uh, we, we farmed at the other side of Barnsley and uh, all the land had been taken compulsory purchase uh, for, for council housing. So we had no alternative to be either give up or, or find somewhere else. And Cannon Hall, came, Cannon Hall Farm came for sale and uh, my father sort of put a, put a bid in for it uh, well, it was it was an auction bid, uh, and uh, he just bid once one hundred pounds, and it, uh, it it sort of topped the the last bid. So uh, we ended up with Cannon Hall Farm. Yeah, seven thousand one hundred, wasn't it? It was just yeah. over the uh, yeah. It was just it was just just that one bid that made the difference. Made the difference, but it yeah. seems it seems it seems a. Uh, uh, rather a small amount now, but to my father, in those days, it, it was it was quite an undertaking to uh, to, to to bid that. But he he used to be uh, what I call a calf certifying officer for the for the government. Yeah. And uh, it put his it put his earnings aside, and that's how uh, how how he sort of bought kind of an old farm. Right. Okay. Yeah. And how much has it you know grown since? since that you know initial period then because in in terms of you know how you know have you got how much more land have you got and things like that what have you built well, it up to yeah we haven't got a lot more land this this land is sort of scarce around here we, it doesn't come up for sale very often and, uh, and you, have, you have to have the money to buy it and so so it was 126 acres was the farm when when we bought it uh since then we've acquired another 50 acres uh, at a nearby farm for which we we use for uh, for running the sheep on, and then with another nine acres at an, an, another site. So that's that's the total acreage of the farm. Yeah. So yeah, just under two hundred acres, really. Yeah. But obviously, the buildings have have changed and adapted, and 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 the, we've got a new farmyard now. We we basically knocked down the old farmyard, put a big indoor play area up. Farm shop um, and uh, party rooms and all sorts of stuff like that. It was a big thing for me that though because I had actually built uh, a new uh, sort of uh, concrete building which uh, was state of the art in those days, and then we knocked it down and and uh, and started again. So yeah, I mean we all had a, we all had a sort of a, a fairly sort of nostalgic view of the old farmyard it was you know it was it was part of our upbringing so yeah, absolutely um you know we used to we used to swing on the beams uh in the in the hay barn when we were kids and whatnot mm-hmm. and now it's part of the farm shop so yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah and what did so what did you you know like livestock wise before all the diversification stuff happened what were you running uh, well, may, we, it was a mixed farm, like most farms in those days. We we we, we grew a few potatoes, which we we, we, we sold to uh, fish and chip shops and things like that. Uh, we we had pigs, we had sheep, we had cows. Uh, so it was a really really mixed farm uh, and uh, enjoyable, to be quite honest. Uh, uh, just small numbers, you know. Yeah. So it, it never really made a profit, did it? That was well, it problem. made it made a profit but it didn't make a good enough living to a, a tiny profit to, to, <laughs> to support a, a, a sort of a, a young family and uh, and such so um that's when the diversification thoughts came into it well that's the next thing really that i was going to say because 
obviously, you know, over the years, Cannon Hall has grown and seen, you know, success after success. And actually, Richard, I was looking back through my emails and we spoke, and I'd forgotten about this, we spoke quite a good few years ago throughout the entry process for the British Farming Awards. That's right, yeah. Um, so looking back through those questions, you know, and about how the diversification happened, what, you know, many farmers are going to be in that situation again now, aren't they, where they're going to have to make a decision, you know, as to whether yeah. they want to there expand over, or what they I can mean, do. already, yeah, already the, over... 50% of farms have some sort of diversification. And that was a figure from a few years back. So I suspect that that most farms are, uh, have a, a fair proportion of their income coming in through, through some sort of diversification. It's very hard to just do it by just farming now. Yeah. Well, well, farmers in general, they're, they're, they're the sort of thinkers of uh, how they can, how they can uh, do something else to make to make that living a little bit better, and I think uh, other uh, people who earn a living from the land are, are great at sort of thinking things out and looking and for adapting, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a big thing, isn't it? I mean, farmers are <laughs> they've got no choice but to adapt, do they? And I don't think people give it, you know, give us enough credit for that. Well, you know that. Yeah, I mean, and that's why in in the mid nineteen eighties, that's why we we basically had to decide. You know, that there were three of us leaving college around the same sort of time and we had to decide whether or not we could make the place, make a living for for a family. They didn't seem to want to leave home, you see. That was the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd get the same thing from my parents, yeah. <laughs> Can't get rid of her. <laughs> Was it a scary, was it a scary process, though? Because I know you just mentioned, Roger, you know, when you've got... When you've yeah. always done something and then to step outside that comfort zone, it must be quite a, you know, a scary prospect. Well, it was a scary prospect and a scary time, to be quite honest, because it was when uh, interest rates were really, really high. So whatever you did, you had to, you had to really make it go. It should be down the swanee, really. So, uh, um, yes, it, it, was, it was a scary time, but... Uh, we got stuck in and we uh, we succeeded. Yeah, yeah, we're worried about interest rates now, aren't we? But back then they were like 50% at one well, point. We got to 18, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I well, suppose that's with your... Yeah, 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 yeah. 18% you were paying anyway. Yeah. 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 Well, you, when you mentioned before, you know, about mixed farming as well, it's, isn't it, you know, you things come back around full circle because, you know, we're looking at fertiliser prices and all that sort of stuff and people are going back to mixed farming a bit. It's all, it all comes around, doesn't it? So you've really got to secure your, yourself and your business in whatever way you can, so. Well, having the farm shop, you we, you know, we're still very much a mixed farm because we we try and do as much of, of what we sell as possible yeah. from from our own farm, you know. Well, I, I, I think a farm shop should be a farm shop and, producing their own produce in as much as they can. And we've, we've sort of tried to do that uh, as much as possible, yeah. I'm going to come back to the shop, um, but just, you know, as we talked about success in the, the changing farm, how does it feel for you both looking at what you've, you know, the farm's achieved up until this point? Because, you know, it's it's exploded, hasn't it, really, Cannon Hall? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, the the sort of, I think the media side of things, the, the TV and the online aspect of it has, has come as a bit of a shock in a way, you know, um, from from sort of small beginnings. We, we got in with the online thing early, and I think that helped a lot to get a, a following in the early days because yeah. the, the social media companies make it a lot harder to, to gain yeah. followers now than they did then. So it was, you know, we, we, we like to think we've always been, you know, we've always had ideas that have been forward looking sort of, I mean, there were always, there were, there were open farms before our open farm, but there weren't Not that many, many were there? Three, you know, so. three or four pro prominent ones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think there were Adams and... Uh... And, we, and, and we'd, pr we'd probably say that there's, there's probably nobody who... Who has as much? Who runs a a proper farm? Yeah, uh, as as much as we do. Well, I've, I've tried to hang on to that uh, 
perspective. Really. I think my dad would have would have preferred to have done none of the rest and just carried on farming if it was up to him, really. <laughs> well, maybe but, so, but uh, I, I've enjoyed the, the, the ride into something new. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been good. And he's we, always been open to, to, to you know, letting us, so slightly younger yeah. ones... Um, so, yeah, a lot of farmers really make that mistake of hanging on to the controls too, too, too long. And uh, I've always been happy to bring them into uh, the decisions and whatever uh, throughout throughout our our time, really. So, uh, and we're very, very proud of what we've achieved, really, I think. Yeah. I was, yeah, that's, you're completely right as well when, you know, both saying about, if you're going to move forwards, you have to be up and you can't hold on to those reins so tightly, can you? Because look no, at no. look at the success that you've seen from from what you've done so far. But, you know, you've got, if we're talking social media, I've got down here, you've got over 73,000 followers on on Instagram. Yeah. Cannon Hall. I think it's over 40 on Twitter. What it, What is it, do you think, that people are interested in because people are increasingly interested in what we're doing aren't they but it seems over the last few years people are you know they are really stepping up that interest yeah. what is it about you guys do you think that people well, like well i think i think the pandemic in a sense it was it was an awful thing but uh it gave us a, a foothold in that direction because uh robert may uh, may middleson he he sort of he did 150 days of continuous. Uh, uh, yeah, every day, every day at seven thirty in the morning, he went live for an hour or two, um, just walking around the farmyard, yeah. doing. You know, it started off around lambing time, I think, yeah. and that grabbed people's well, attention. Well, with a, with a lot of animals, we plant for the the people to come and see. They couldn't come and see, so we took it to them, and I, th I think I think that stood us in really good stead because we've got a lot of supporters and we've still got them. I mean that was on yeah. Facebook and we've we've got we've got over three hundred thousand people following us on Facebook. And at the peak of that lockdown time our Facebook reach was twenty four million in a month. Wow. Yeah. Which was amazing. But people people really didn't have much to do. Yeah. So you know they uh, and I think they they just bought into the idea of the family. Uh, Robert likes talking, so um, he's he's good at maintaining a monologue. Yeah, uh, while he's doing stuff, and uh, you know, and I think that sort of when we first did those sort of uh, live videos, we thought people aren't going to want to watch for a long time, uh, so we kept it down to like one minute thirty seconds, two minutes. But what we've actually realised is that people, I think, we become like something in the corner of the room, like like the TV that's sort of like babbling away, and yeah. uh, and they and they quite enjoy that. They feel part of it. Yeah, you know they, I mean? they definitely do feel part of it. The, uh, yeah. the support as a group, there's no doubt. Yeah, that's another thing that we did during lockdown is we set up a supporters group so people pay for extra content, like three pound forty nine a month, which is the cost of a cup of coffee or whatever. Uh, it's getting to be so it's cheaper than the cost of a cup of coffee. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, and for that they get extra videos, extra Facebook lives, extra pictures and stuff like that. And um, we would never have considered doing that if it hadn't been for the lockdown, I don't think. And the same with merchandise. We sort mm -hmm. of started doing that as well. So there were a lot of... A lot of things during... That was another little it, bit of diversification. Yeah, it. yeah exactly. We, it made us think again outside the box, um, which, you know, you, you, you if you get like a sort of a reasonably successful business and it gets going, then you, you don't see a reason to change. But it can be a force for good, at some a bit of adversity, because it makes you look for other things yeah. to do. When none of us natural presenters or anything like that you know uh, some are more natural than others but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a re representative of the old time anyway yeah <laughs> yeah but you know what I think the best bit of telly that we ever that was ever done was a little bit that my dad did in the first series where he was talking about when 
when his dad died and uh, and he had to take over the farm at 16 years of age and it was really moving and uh, I think if you if you take long enough to get something out to people then you'll then 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 there will be something good that you can find there so um and I, you know yeah I remember, certainly I remember doing that and it uh, even though it was so long ago it, it sort of it, it, it hits you and uh, well it's a big thing to lose your dad at 16 and, isn't it yeah yeah it is yeah you know this this face is and it's it, you know this is when you're in farming as well, you live and breathe it, don't you? It's not its not just a job. We need people to see behind everything else and see that there's actually a family behind it. And I think probably as well, you know, the the Channel 5 series that you're part of, like it, it shows people exactly who you are. And as, as farmers, we need to show people who we are, don't we? Yeah. I think so, yeah, because I suppose uh, over the years, there's become a a negative image sometime about about farmers, you know, because because people because they spend a lot of time out in the fields or in the barns or whatever. They don't actually there's less of them around, and they don't actually mix as much. No, well, 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 there used to be a big workforce in uh, in agriculture, but that's uh, it's, it's trickled down to to very yeah, few like people. seasonal workforces yeah. and stuff yeah. like that, you know. Well, it just need the, the mechanisation is, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a little bit what I what I miss now because uh, because we're a small farm. You can't afford to to buy implements for to do every job. So you get you get a contractor in to do, and and I miss that getting being part of the uh, the actual getting har- on a tractor har- harvesting of, uh, of whatever there is to harvest and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, that's a downside from my point of view, but it's... I do like the stock side of things a lot better, and so with, with plenty of animals for me to keep me uh, occupied, occupied anyway. <laughs> keep you happy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we used to be we when we were when we were kids, really. We my uh, when we were clearing a field of hay, it'd be small bales, and yeah. my mum would drive the tractor, and my dad would chuck the bales up, and we'd stack them. And uh, and then we bring them back to the barn. It took took ages, didn't it, when you compare it with? Well, it does uh, compare it to now because yeah. one man can do it from from a tractor seat, really. And, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know, you have fond memories of those times. Yeah. yeah. But that's what I love, though. I love those, you know, those generational s- stories being weaved throughout, you know, farming families. We've got, you know, incredible history, haven't we? So, I think if you've got the chance to to tell that, then you should go hell for leather for telling it because, yeah. you know, people can relate, can't they? It was a nice thing as well. We, I've, I've been written, well, I've been written a book, you know, and then written another book. Um, we never thought that we, sort of, our story would be. Interesting enough. <laughs> <laughs> How wrong you were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm writing a cookbook at the moment. If I can get my, if I can get my, uh, myself in gear, I'm... Uh, I'm trying because I do um, I do sort of a a weekly live on uh, on cooking through the farm shop thing, and uh, I'm trying to uh, and there's definitely a there's definitely a demand for it. So yeah. I'm, uh, I need to you 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 keep watching me, don't you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, the only trouble is you get a lot of people from America watching you, which. Uh... Oh really? It's not a problem. <laughs> no, it's not a problem. But that's uh, quite nice. So uh, interesting. At least you can, you can show yeah, them. Yeah. You can uh, pass the message on to yeah. uh, to overseas, which can't be a bad thing at all. Absolutely. Well, we've definitely got a big following in the US, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Through the farm as well, you know, we've had people visit. Even even just after lockdown, we had people from the from the US visiting the farm just because they discovered it during lockdown. Yeah. Which is uh, mm. amazing that. That they're so engaged that they want to travel all that way. Yeah, and the the filming side of it is it's produced a lot of new customers for us because they they actually <coughs> excuse me they actually come uh, and spend a few days in a, in this area. So yeah. it's 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 helping other industries as well as our own. But we, from the Isle of, Isle of Wight to the Shetland Isles, we've had people from those areas and. Uh, it's amazing, and, and it's very, very interesting to uh, to talk to them, and they like you to talk to them. 
just to tell the story, really. Mm. Yeah. And it's good for Barnsley, isn't it? Because it, there's plenty of uh, extra spending for all those hotels. Yeah, stuff. that's right. They, yeah, they've, they've had... They've had uh... I never thought Barnsley would be a holiday destination. No. <laughs> 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 there you go. But that's the thing, isn't it? You know, again... Um... We we run this campaign called Farming Can, which I know you're yeah you know you you've been part of Richard with us, but you know it's a community and there's all these other strings coming off all these farm businesses that people don't you know people don't realise do they and it's it snowballs so yeah and I think I think other people have have seen the success of of certain sort of higher profile people and they're sort of like joining in now. The number of farmers I'm following has increased a lot. You know, it's people are really, um, really getting, really seeing the value in it, which is yeah. great. And and it does add value to, yeah, to your I, business. I, I suppose when you think of other industries benefiting as well, from like the pods and things like that, that people put up and such, yeah. somebody's to make them. So it's creating more jobs, more whatever for people. Absolutely. Now, the countryside is, is quite a big business now, you know, and, uh, and it needs to be treated with the respect it deserves, you know, I think, you know, from government and stuff like that. I think it's uh, it, it, it adds a real valuable contribution. It, you know, we've created a lot of jobs in it, yeah, and it, it it's important that, that government recognise yeah. what, what farmers have added. Yeah, and I think it's important that to, for them to realise that uh, we need to produce enough food for, for the amount of people that are about. Uh, and you can't do it by uh, just rewilding and things like that. It's got to be done in a very measured and uh, thoughtful way, I think. Oh, absolutely. And it might yeah. help if they don't change the policies every the mind every five hours. Minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because we can't keep up. <laughs> um, but let, let's just have a bit of an overview then of what actually, you know, is your business. You've got the farm shop, you've got the play barn, you've got the actual farm inside. What have I missed? Yeah. What is that? The three main we've floors? Three the we've what, got sorry, what was that, sorry? Bread. We've got three restaurants. Three restaurants. So, yeah. Um, one of which is a new dog-friendly restaurant, which has been done really well. Yeah, we we opened a small one of like fifty seats, thinking, well, you know, people are taking dogs around the park, which is next door, which is another bonus, you know, having that sort of green space there, um, and uh, and we we thought that fifty seats would be enough for those dog walkers, but it wasn't. So uh, we've we've made, built a bigger one that's hundred and fifty seats now. Um, we've got the white bull, which was our original, which started off as home farm tea rooms. Which was basically our, our original diversification yeah. back in 1981. That was the first thing we did, really. And while it wasn't mega successful, it so it brought me yeah. mother a dishwasher, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it, it? It was it was successful, but it was gradual. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we, we we opened a little tea room with 50, 54 seats or fifty six, I think, uh, and that became. Uh, so every weekend, my dad yeah. was, you were you were cooking toasties. Yeah, I was chief toast maker. <laughs> <laughs> and my mum and her friend Rosemary were were in there, uh, in the kitchen too. And we we had a, about sort of three or four girls from the village who yeah who came up and waited on tables. And I I took the money on the door as they went out. It was um, yeah, that was the start of it really. Yeah. Uh, that was our first little dip into diversification. But it did sort of it, it sort of taught us a little bit about catering. That obviously yeah. we've we've gone on to yeah to bigger things, and we're not involved with the kitchens anymore. Uh, but but um, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I mean, like in how the, you in all get indoor... stuck in, though. You all get you all get stuck in. You're all in it together. You try things. If you you, like you said before, you adapt. If it doesn't work, you know. And you've obviously, like you said about this new dog friendly site as well, after lockdown, you know, you can completely see how there'd be a market for, for that type of restaurant. Yeah. I, I just love how you all you're all kind of in it together and always evolving and changing together. Yeah. And even down to the down to the floor in the dog cafe, you, you you've got to think what's the best floor. Wood's no good. 
uh, tiles are no good really because they can get broken and so, so we put a concrete floor and polished it and it's mm. it looks absolutely amazing to be quite honest yeah. and it, it'll be there it'll be there forever so that was a something you learn and uh, and I think I think it was a good, a good the thing first to do. era we put the floors in and they were really wobbly. <laughs> we were like, really? I mean, tea everywhere. The concrete floors, and we were all we were all working on them and not we, doing the finest job. It has to be said. So we were, we were, we've had to flatten them out since. Then. We were farmers, not <laughs> builders, really. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we got a, a bit of stick from building building people at uh, being since. But yeah, <laughs> it, it looked okay, but technically it wasn't just quite good enough. So if you don't we, try, we, you'll never know. Back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about uh, my favourite thing ever, which is Christmas. Like I've been annoying, I've been annoying everybody since about July about Christmas. I literally love Christmas. Right. I, I've seen that you you've got some Christmas activities going on. Is that right? You've got family activities going on for the. Yeah, we got we got Santa's magic button yeah. show, and um, people sort of. Uh, they come along, they see the Santa show, and then they visit the uh, the elves' workshop and uh, pick up a present there. And uh, we have some great elves and uh, and Santas and stuff who do a brilliant job for us and uh, and create the magic of Christmas for for another generation in the way that you know we we had it created in a a sort of a more homespun way, didn't we? We did, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, we we we've even got reindeer now as well too. Oh, have you? Yeah. Yeah. To give the impression, with, in fact, it, it's decoration time down there at the moment. I think so. Uh, I just like that you've got you can you know you can offer people and families that experience, you know, to yeah. let people on the farm and be able to to offer them that experience. I just think that's that's a really lovely aspect. Yeah. And you know, events have become a much bigger thing for us. You know, we seem to we seem to go from. From the pumpkin festival to Christmas, and yeah. and then to sort of, we have a we have a little sort of lambing half term yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. festival. We have we do two lots of lambing specifically for the school yeah. holidays, so Easter is a big thing for us and always has been. Hmm. But we're just, uh, it's become. I think it makes life go faster. That's the only trouble. Well, it does. It's re- relentless, if you might say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, it's nice to have those events, and uh, and they sort of they, they mark they mark times in the year, and uh, and uh, we see the same faces back at them time and time again. Which yeah, is that's really nice. nice. Yeah. Mm. And what and about we see the... people who came as kids, sort of bringing their own kids now, which is yeah. lovely, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. And what about the farm shop and butchery? I suppose this will be quite a busy time for you guys. Um, you know, in terms of that side of the business, do you, you know, have you seen perhaps, I guess what I'm saying is people through lockdown obviously looked a lot closer at what they were buying and where they were buying it from. This Christmas is probably actually the first proper normal Christmas that we've all had since, yeah. since lockdown. It is, but it's, it's going to be a bit of an austerity Christmas for a lot of people, I think, and, and we have noticed yeah. that while... While takings went up during lockdown in the farm shop, they have dropped back down a little bit now. So, we, well, yeah, they, they, I mean, we're still reasonably busy. They haven't but... dropped below below what they were, but uh, yes, it, we had a, a really almost a false a false rise uh, during the pandemic. I think yeah. people trusted us as somewhere they could shop safely compared yeah. to a supermarket and things like yeah. that, um, and. Uh, but I just think that people's disposable income is is not what it was, and they're yeah, and they're thinking very hard about the, yeah. the cost of fuel and stuff like that over yeah. over winter, and maybe they're making the decision to. Uh, so we, you know, it's really important that we encourage people to to keep shopping with us, um, and and places like us because. Uh, <laughs> When the times are good again, they'll 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 want us to be there, and uh, mm. and uh, and we need to make sure that we are. I mean, yeah. we you know we're always adaptive, and we're always yeah. it's 
Uh, well, I've, I've just noticed this last few weeks. It, it seems pretty busy, especially in the uh, on the in, weekends, in, where, in, where in the restaurants and things. Yeah. People are still coming out, which which has surprised me because I thought they'd be thinking about saving money. To be quite honest, and uh, yeah, I don't think it's quite happened yet, but just fearful that it it might do. Yeah. Uh, and it's, if you if you haven't got the money, you can't spend it, can you? So. Uh, <laughs> Well, no. Uh, uh, we'll just have to write. And I think I think you've always got to you've always got to be thinking ahead. You've got to write this always... time out, I think, yeah. and uh, and be there at the end of it. Yeah. That's the, the important thing. Uh, keep there because we we've also got a lot of people relying on us to uh, to keep going because we've got a big workforce and uh, yeah, it's a ripple effect, yeah. isn't that it? That was one of the good things during lockdown. We did keep. Most people busy because the farm shop was so much busier. We could have, yeah. we had our chefs from the other restaurants making ready meals, um, and we had staff moving across to to the farm shop because the farm shop was busier. So I really do feel like it's super important that we get this sort of food education or something into schools, because to me that's, that's the good. only way we can we can help to in any way sort of sort of it's not going to solve it but it's going to help towards solving it because we need to know how to cook we need to know how to not waste food and we need it's really important it absolutely is and i think there are i think there are a number of number of subjects that are sort of neglected in school i think sort of um financial sort of uh you, you know sort of fiscal sort of just we're just knowing how our money works is a really important one. I think cooking is really important. I think it used to be part of the curriculum, really. And uh, I do think they're, they're narrowing and narrowing the curriculum. It's all reading, writing, and arithmetic, and nothing else. You know, the best education systems in the world are the ones where they take their kids and get them out in the countryside and and seeing stuff growing and. Uh, you know the Scandinavian sort of education systems yeah. are, are the ones that work really well, and they don't start them as as early as we do. You know, they they, they start in Finland. They start kids at seven years old. Yeah. So you know they've, but I do think I do think we've lost touch with a lot of what matters. And then there are a lot of people sort of working against our food our food system really. Yeah. Uh, and. And it really should be taught that uh, you do need animals in, in, in the world to, to make the, 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 the soil work and everything else about it. I think we're going to, you know, we're going to have to move, because of the cost of fertilizers and things like that and the impact of them, we're going to have to move away from that and onto animal manure more, yeah, personally. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you get rid of all the animals, where are you going to get that from? Absolutely. Uh, you know, that's a natural way. That's putting goodness back into the soil and preventing it getting eroded. And yeah, well, we 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 sort of moved a lot more onto that last spring, and uh, and it it worked. Now I, we'll have to think out how to continue that. It, I I think it's it's difficult without those artificial yeah. fertilizers, but we'll have to learn how to do it and. Uh, I've heard it said that if you stand still long enough, you'll you'll get back to where you yeah, you should be, you know, yeah, like in, yeah. in a way. And uh, and you know, a lot of those very innovative agricultural systems, like rotation and stuff like that, yeah. we don't we don't we don't, we don't do as much now. No, no, and no. it was it, it was done because it was really good for sort of keeping pests low and stuff like that. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And just... So yeah, we need to move into into a different era, really, from that point of view. Uh, I think you're right in uh, in wanting to sort of promote that side of it. Can you imagine though, if you brought a bunch of kids onto the farm and said, you know, <laughs> they'd love seeing you put cow poo across a field or whatever. That's what kids love, don't they? Like you know, <laughs> it's good. they love just being outside and they just take so much in. It's just it's just allowing little minds, isn't it, to have the facts and to have the experiences and then they can grow up deciding whatever they want to decide. But it's just... Yeah, and it's like, it's like when I was a kid, you know, like my grandma would take me out mushroom collecting in the field. Yeah. 
we collect loads of mushrooms and uh, bring them back, chop them up, cook them and freeze them, and then they go into stuff. What was that about? Yeah. yeah. Around. Yeah. Uh, and when we when it wasn't mushroom season, she'd have us collecting sticks in a bag, so that we'd have something to light the fire with. Yeah. And uh, you know. It, it, I'm, you know, I have very fond memories. I was probably annoyed at the time at being forced to, to go and collect <laughs> sticks, sticks, but I've got very fond memory, <laughs> memories of it now, you know. Uh, yeah. um, okay, so what about Christmas itself and Christmas Day? Will you all be together? Will you all have a meal together? Or is it, is it all, is everyone out on different places? And No, no, we'll, we'll all, we, we, we used to have it in, uh, Roberts was the biggest house, so we, we used to have it in there, but, We've now moved into the uh, in, into the restaurant, haven't we? Well, it just makes a lot of life. So it makes can... life easy. Yeah. Well, the restaurant isn't open, but but having all the ovens in there and yeah. you know proper job. It, it, yeah, exactly. So that's our family <laughs> Christmas. Yeah. So we and we, we've got a bar in there as well. So <laughs> oh, I see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> and what will? Yeah, I mean, going back going back to Christmas, it's always been sort of right from being. 16 when i when i started farming uh i've always had turkeys at christmas and things like yeah uh, produce for christmas and things so i used to cut holly uh from the from the from the trees and sell that as well you, yeah. you did those sort of things just to but now uh central eating made it that you can't put any holly out anyway because it just dries up yeah <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was the sort of things we did and and i, I always did did turkeys right the way through until until we opened the farm up. Really. Well, I, but we, we still did them because we only opened in summer originally, didn't we? So we still, for yeah. two or three years after we opened, we were still doing turkeys. And uh, we decided it didn't look good. That no, we didn't have a we <laughs> we didn't have a we didn't have a fridge or anything. It was like done the old fashioned way, yeah. so that we were just hanging them in outbuildings. And uh, but I think they tasted better. Well, they might, yeah, yeah. It was it was risky though that if you, <laughs> if you really if you had a, a warm period around Christmas, you were... my dad was sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you, will you have turkeys at your main your main food on Christmas Day? What? Tell me about we Christmas, have the Christmas left meal. In the farm shop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we do have a bit of everything actually. So, uh, yeah, so. We have we have beef and we have pork and we have turkey. There's quite a few of us, so it's yeah. Sort of, it yeah. Makes sense to have a. We we make it a real feast. Yeah. Because, uh, it's worth celebrating. Too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Do you have anything that you you know, like a family tradition in terms of anything that you cook? Like, I've got my you know my dad always makes a, a sausage meat pie, which is literally just sausage meat, lemon juice, salt and pepper, and it's just baked. But it's the best. It's the it's my favorite yeah, thing on my Christmas plate. <laughs> I never used to like cabbage until my mum uh, started cooking cabbage au gratin. So it is a little lovely cheesy sauce. Yeah. And she always does that for, for she, Christmas. She makes uh, cabbage red and, red and white uh, and she makes the stuffing. Uh, I like bread sauce as well. Uh, yeah, so do I. Bread sauce, turkey without bread sauce in turkey. Somehow. What's the point? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not really as much into cranberry as everybody else. We like bread, <laughs> old fashioned. Uh, yeah. But good stuff. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we we uh, we'll have a good time at Christmas. There's no doubt about Sounds that. Sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd also like to point out that you probably still got jobs to do on Christmas Day. Just to you know, for anyone else listening, that farming actually doesn't stop, does it? You still got the animals no, to check on. You still got all your jobs to do before everyone sits yeah, down to yeah. enjoy the meal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we we sort of all join in. There's one or two people uh, that work for us that volunteer to come back and, and uh, help with that. So yeah, we have a bigger workforce than most farms, and that is a an is advantage it? in that yeah. we've got some people who are really <laughs> they're brilliant, and they'll come in and uh, and help out. Dedicated so. to it, yeah. Will you just tell me what you actually run? livestock wise now because obviously you said you you feed a lot of the stock through the shop so what is it sheep and yeah we, we have a, 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 at the moment about uh, four, four, 400 to 450 ewes lambing right yeah uh, we have uh, about 45 sows producing uh, piglets yeah 
uh, we 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 have uh, some uh, beef short on beef cattle, and we have some Highland beef cattle. But uh, the main thing is we do we do go we buy store cattle and fatten them. Yep. Uh, uh, for, for, for the shop. Yeah. And we do that on other local farms, don't we, that we yeah. rent buildings off. Yeah. Right. Um, so we, you know, we're, we're sort of, you know, we've we've got, we're sort of helping out other places yeah. locally as well, you know. So we, we, we roughly buy about 300 store cattle in each year uh, and fatten them. Uh, and uh, they, they, they all go through the farm shop then. Wow. And we keep the prettier wow. ones here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the lookers, <laughs> and we do we do sort of we've shown the, the island cows and such. Yeah. We hadn't done it for for uh, a couple of generations, but uh, I think uh, my dad loves to be at the shows again. Like, yeah, he, I bet. he enjoyed it when he was a young farmer, didn't you? And, yeah. Uh, well, they're so important, that, aren't they? That's yeah, yeah. We we enjoy having. Uh, we we've got some uh, Dutch spotted sheep as well now. Yeah. They're they're a fairly, fairly new breed on the block, and uh, uh, yeah, we've got some some what nice nice stock with those. What we've been able to do with the short arms and the islands is now we're we're sort of like breeding to sell as breeding stock more yeah. than oh, yeah. more than we were as well, which is it's nice to be to have animals of that quality. My dad would never have thought at one time that he would have had a, an animal of the quality. To, to take to the Yorkshire show and and yeah. to you know even win prizes is uh, it's brilliant that that we've got to that point where he can where he can do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So that kind of leads me on to the next thing, really, which is you know, so looking you know looking in it and what you you all do as a family and looking at the Cannon Hall um, you know enterprise, if you will, you could watch it on you know the TV or you could watch it on Instagram and it you look like you all enjoy it and I, but I know that behind the scenes you are you work very very hard obviously to make this a success but what what do you love about it what do you love about life on the farm what do you love about what you do together and what you've created I guess I think I love the communication with people and people around the world not necessarily people who are, who are even visiting the farm but the fact that they they love what we do I think, and that they and that they and that they feel part of it. That's the that's the nicest thing for yeah. me. Well, I'm a bit similar in in a way. I, I do enjoy walking around the farm, and people do recognise you as because they've seen you on television and that. So they're always sort of keen to to have a word. Uh, but having having sort of said that, you, you hear their stories from from where they come from and what the, what they do and and whatever. But I also like getting round, getting round the uh, the livestock, walking around the fields, checking them, and if, if I see anything wrong, I can report back and we can do do something about it. That's the side I I, I like the uh, the stockmanship and that sort of thing. I, I like looking after them. Yeah. What about looking? At, so if you were looking back, Roger, now, what what are your thoughts looking at? You know what the business has become. Uh, well, it's it's become a, a, a quite a, a big, difficult business to manage because it, it's not just a farm; it's it's all the other things that. Yeah. Uh, and and I'm glad I've got a family to around me to uh, to sort of help with all those decisions. Yeah. Uh, one one man would would find it quite difficult, I think. So uh, it's it's. It's a family farm, and and it has to be because it shares it out. And it sort of evolves over time. So, we, you know, each each year we do something, don't we? That adds a little yeah. bit. But it's like it's sort of it's it, it's more organic than than something that you sort of sit back and think. Well, I'm you know, I'm, it's it's going all the time. So you never really have time to yeah you can you can to, it's, it's sort one, of sit back and admire your work or anything it's it, like on to the next thing it's one job it's one job that you you can't stand still you've got to mm. present something new no matter if you, how small or whatever you've got to have something fresh 
if you stand still, you'll get overtaken. Yeah, 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 yeah. you'll go backwards. So yeah. we, you know, we we never see it as a as a completed no, project. No. It's just, no. and you know, like farming, it's uh, it's an ongoing process that. And th things change, and things get better, and mm. easier to do, and uh, yeah, and. Yeah, one but, of the you know, one of the nice things is is the fact the number of people come to you and say you got us through the pandemic. That's right. You know they really do. They say it all the time. You know, like you were something. You were a reason for me to get up in the morning at seven thirty. And, same uh, same story from. They they don't think it is, but it must mm. have struck struck that sort of a chord with people because uh, it's the same remarks. A huge thanks to both Richard and Roger. Now, if you want to find out more about uh, the family at Cannon Hall Farm, you can catch up with them in next week's Farmer's Guardian in my Christmas in the Countryside special. That's it from me this month, but don't forget to tune in early next month to find out who we're at home with next. <laughs> <laughs>